Something's up. Wait, something's off. What's going on? Something's up. Uh, uh, we're talking about Oko again, aren't we? All right, let's do it, my friends. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about Oko and Standard. Specifically, the discussion for the day is, is banning Oko actually going to fix Standard? Now, I've been asked this question a number of times, and I figured, you know what, this is a perfectly reasonable conversation to have, and it's completely understandable why people would ask that question based on the current circumstances, right? Depends on how long you've been a part of Magic. You had, That determines how many different bands you've seen, kind of gives you a vibe as to what the current health levels might be like from a historical perspective. Were things ever this bad? Are they the worst they've ever been? How, like, how well does the game recover from this sort of thing? Is this just going to keep happening over and over and over? If you've just started the game and you've only been playing for like, let's say the last two months, then your experience of the game is going to be kind of a weird one when it comes to bannings. Because we had a ban announcement a little over a month ago that said, we're not making any changes to standard. But then two days later, they were like, hey, we're moving ahead the ban date by a considerable amount. And it made you go, wait, what's going on? And that, of course, was caused by Field of the Dead. Field of the Dead was dominating the meta, creating a completely unbalanced field, or I mean, that's how it felt at the time in comparison to Oka. Well, we'll get to that anyways. Field of the Dead had like 42% field representation, meaning that up to 42%, like around that number, that would be the number of people playing that deck in any given event. So it's almost half, right? And you go, wow, like almost half the people are coming out of the field, field of these dead decks with the, like the Golos Fields combo. So Wizards stepped in and said, we got to stop this. We're going to go ahead and axe Field of the Dead, right? So you have this experience where no bans, two days later, all of a sudden they're moving up the normal band date and boom, Field of the Dead is getting nailed within a couple of weeks when you thought you were going to get to use it for two months. So you go, oh, okay, you know, like, I mean, they got to try and ban things to, to make sure the format works. I understand, you know, you got Field of the Dead and too many people are playing it. 42% of people are playing it. And then they come to now where it's like, wait, okay, so we're looking at Oko being up to 75% of the field where three out of every four decks, three out of every four players is packing an Oko deck. That's a, that's a lot more than 42%. And so a lot of people go, okay, well, Oko, Oko is going to get banned. Look at like either Oko has to get banned or a bunch of other cards have to get banned so that Oko won't get banned, right? They can either ban Oko or they can ban the cards that surround Oko in an attempt to lower Oko's power level, but keep them in the format. But either way, there's no way to look at the current meta and say, yeah, we can, we, this is fine. You ever see that little meme of the dog in like the burning room and he's just like, this is fine. Like that's the level we're talking about if they just ignore Oko. Now, so they're gonna, they're going to do something about Oko. Either Oko himself is gonna go or cards surrounding Oko are going to go. So we're looking at a scenario where they go, okay, we, we just got Fields of the Dead banned. A month later, we've got Oko banned. So what's next? It doesn't, like, for some people, the question doesn't become, oh, we're, we're done now. It just goes, what's next? Is it a game where every month, like, we're going to have new cards banned? If you're somebody new to Magic, you might think that. You might be like, I guess just every month they ban cards. But that, that's, that's not normal. We don't normally have this much disruption going on in Standard specifically. I mean, the, you, things can get crazy in other formats. But with Standard, this honestly... The amount of representation of Oko, it really does feel like the old Affinity days. And the Affinity days were just dreadful. And they they let them go on for too long. I'll say this in Wizards' defense right here, man. Bannings suck, but them doing them faster, them moving dates up and stuff, that works for me. That's good. Because if you just let things linger, it does more damage over time. If standard has too much unfun nonsense, or there's only one deck to play, it lacks variety, it lacks fun, you will lose players, right? You will lose people, first of all, from standard to other formats, which is still okay, because they're playing Magic, but you will lose people who are playing the game altogether. We will lose fellow parts 
of the sixth color of magic and they'll just be gone and they won't be coming back and that's that's not the best situation so what you have to do is you have to figure out how do you minimize your losses you do that by going ahead and issuing these bands the affinity days were insane the ravager affinity deck back in mirrodin which was like 2003 so we're talking like a decade and a half ago wizards learned from this scenario dampened the power level with kamigawa and developed a system of like power grading like a power point system where they could make sure that there was only a certain amount of power in any given set now again that was a long long time ago when i talk about some of this stuff without like actually pegging it down to a year my brain just goes oh yeah blah blah mirrored and it wasn't that long ago somewhere around the middle of magic and you start to look at the time frame and go oh my god i'm old man magic i've been i've been a part of this for so long that stuff that is like really old doesn't feel that old to me. What I'm trying to say is it's been a considerable amount of time since they introduced that policy and I don't know if they're using it anymore. That's what's going on right now. I can't say what exactly is going to happen with standard. Now here's the ideal scenario. They issue whatever type of ban they wish to issue, either the Oko banning or the banning around Oko, and that lowers Oko's deck power level enough that other decks can flourish because Standard is at its best when there are a number of different decks available. Now, you'll you'll never end up with a scenario where there are like 20 different super high-level viable decks, but the, the more of these decks that you can have, the more like playing off against each other. You know, for example, Oko getting banned can leave room for other strategies to grow. You can start to explore and see how is that mono red with Tor brand going to develop, right? How is the adventure deck going to pan out what is the best adventure deck is it better to go green black is it better to go green white do you want to include the lucky clovers or lucky charms that double up your adventure triggers all these sort of things that can be explored more when there's more room for these decks to actually thrive and survive because right now in standard you just have oko and answer to oko that's it and that's it's never it's never good to have two decks, especially it's never good to be zeroing in on almost having one deck. I mean, when the field is 75% something and 25% something else, it's pretty much this, right? So at this point, we're almost we're almost playing a one deck format. Although I guess, you know what? That, that might be the solution to all standard bannings. If we just have a one deck agreement where we all just play the exact same deck, there will never be needs for bannings anymore because they won't want to ban something because it'll be in everybody's deck. I think that's it. I think the one deck solution is how we solve this. But anyhow, back to the back to the main point here. What we're looking for is a diverse standard, right? The reason that these bans have to happen is because these decks are too oppressive and represent too much of the meta. What you want is to, I mean, have four or five, I mean, having eight different decks would be amazing, you know, where it's just like, okay, We've got variety. You can have different interplay now. Some of the, there's there's always going to be a deck that's technically the best deck. But what you want is the deck that's technically the deck the best deck, not to be like miles beyond the other decks. You want it to be like this is the best deck overall, but it's weak against these particular decks. And there's like it, you want more than just paper rock scissors. Paper rock scissors is all right. I mean, you got three options at least then. But you want something more with a similar kind of mindset where certain things beat each other, and then you just have no like absolutely clear best choice where it feels like this is the best deck but if enough people play it and you come in with the deck that'll beat it then all this other kind of stuff but it doesn't work the same way like the the beating oko decks don't really do that well that's why oko decks are dominating so going into the the new standard which we're going to get what is it today's the 12th right so six days from now we're going to be entering into like the next phase of standard what is going to rise to the top? Are we going to be looking at Mono Red? Is it going to be an adventure deck? Uh, are we going to actually have another problem child in the Fires of Invention? I did do a video talking about Fires of Invention because when you play with making things free, you leave up room for abuse, obviously, because the entire balancing mechanic of Magic the Gathering are casting costs, really. So when you remove casting costs from the equation, then it becomes ooh, you're 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 playing with fire. That's really that's really what it is, which is perfect for the fires of invention. What I'll do is I'll link that invention of fire video at the end of this video if you want to check it out if you're curious about that. And uh, it's just one example though. Like fires of invention is something that is it could it could end up being a problem, but it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's going to be a problem currently. 
That being said, when I mentioned before about this power system and the balancing and everything, I don't know if Wizards uses it anymore. There are a number of things going on right now and changes going on with Magic the Gathering that make me wonder if internal philosophy has changed to a degree where they're pushing the power level and go, well, if it disrupts standard, does it matter as much? I, I don't think that they're basing their decisions on the same sort of things anymore. So it might be one where Commander is becoming the most prevalent thing when it comes to Wizards of the Coast. Like they're doing a ton of Commander products. You can see it in the way they design sets like Modern Horizons and other things. You can really see they're pushing to the Commander crowd, which is a smart move because Commander players and like kitchen, like just kitchen top, chill and play with what you own kind of people. And I just mean like the, these people will grab some cards and then they'll just play and they're not like, I'm on top of the meta or whatever. It's just literally playing with what you have kicking around, what you, what you already own. So that makes up a huge part of Magic's actual like demographic. It's a, the majority of the majority of Magic players aren't playing standard, right? Now standard is a good money maker for Wizards, but how many players are being left untapped? And is it actually better to just make standard sets that have these overpowered cards that will appeal to your larger customer base? even if it does disrupt standard. I mean, at the end of the day, we're dealing with a corporation that's owned by Hasbro. Hasbro wants return on its money, so they expect Wizards to keep kicking profits up the chain. And so Wizards has to always be looking for where can we make the most money or lose like lose the least money, right? Always working on those kind of angles. So if standard isn't making them as much money, they're losing money by doing this. Are they gaining more money by this push towards commander players by having more powerful cards overall? Because Throne of Eldraine does seem to have a fair number of powerful cards. I like powerful cards. I mean, a bunch of them are green, and I love green, so I'm super happy they're here. But at the same time, it does cause these balancing issues. Now, overall, when I look at standard and what's available, I currently don't feel like there's anything else that will like immediately rise to the level of Oko problem. I I don't think so. I think probably the highest likelihood of there being a problem child card is the Fires of Invention, but that also does have the whole restriction of you can only play two spells and can't do things during your opponent's turn. So it's it's iffy. That one feels like it has the potential to maybe get a little wonky. Who knows? Maybe when another set enters standard, when we're looking at Theros, it might shake things up some more. But for me right now, I feel like Oko getting banned is probably going to be us entering a time of more stability with standard, where we'll have some more variety with at least at least three or four different decks that are being tried out and might have enough power to be worth your time, right? I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe some weird version of Simic Flash. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the 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 Oko thing is just it makes it hard. It makes it hard to see exactly how much of a problem other things can be when they're suppressed by Oko as well. So. I can't guarantee that we're not going to end up in another wonked out standard based around some whatever power card, but under under it all right now to me, it seems like getting rid of either Oko or nerfing the Oko deck hard enough that Oko's no longer the king dog should should give us more variety. Let's, ho let's hope so at least. Either way, I'm genuinely interested in your opinion on this because I do play standard a fair bit, but at the same time, I also do play like gigantic 200 card green decks. And I don't actually know if the way, like Arena has a system where it kind of gauges the power level of your deck. And my deck looks like a noob deck. So I don't know exactly how often I'm gonna be thrown against people who have like higher power decks. So I don't know if I have like the best, the exact best view of what like true competitive standard is aside from looking at like top eight listing from events and stuff. But in terms of Arena and getting a feel for the flow of what's going on currently, it can be a little tricky sometimes. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I want to thank all my patrons and channel members for supporting what I do. I have a lot of fun here. And to all of you, I say together, we are the sixth color of magic.